ABC News has deployed a team of journalists to the BRICS summit. Let's hear from one of them now on uh, some of what we could expect to unfold in the next coming days. Senior economics reporter and SABC News anchor Nombo Melezo Siziba joins us. Nombo, a very good afternoon to you. Look, uh, BRICS uh, expansion and de-dollarization, of course, said uh, to dominate the talks when the summit gets underway tomorrow. What else is on the agenda, though? Thanks very much, Ayanda. Well, of course, very, very um, big topics there, as you mentioned, uh, de-dollarization and the issue of expansion. Of course, that will be discussed at the uh, the heads, head of state summit that starts tomorrow. That's taking place from tomorrow through to Thursday. It will be very interesting to see what happens there. We've heard a number of countries, up to 40 countries are interested in joining BRICS. Some have, have officially put their hand up, while others Others have intimated an interest so um, that's an interesting one that we're going to be observing tomorrow but in terms of what else has been happening it's really been the BRICS business forum that's been dominating discussions and really they're the engine of the whole BRICS idea because these are business fora that meet together from all the different BRICS countries that talk about the challenges and opportunities for trade and investment in each other's countries and through their, uh, their through their interactions they're able to then feed the information through to heads of state which then informs policy on the ways forward that can make uh, you know that can lubricate the wheels of doing business with each other so they're going to be meeting tomorrow that they're going to have their uh, BRICS business forum where they're then going to hand over an annual report to the heads of state which will help to inform those policies which ultimately seek to ensure that there's better trade now one of the things that we We've been looking at here, of course, was the manufacturing forum where President, where the uh, Minister of uh, Trade and Industry and Competition, Ibrahim Patel, uh, spoke to the forum there, talking about the need to work together to ensure that all countries benefit from enhanced uh, manufacturing, and of course, the key issue that Africa really needs to industrialize more if we're to really capitalize on this framework that's been set up in the form of the African continental free trade area. The other area that was being looked at uh, was the oceans economy, which brings me nicely to my guest now, that is the South African Transport Minister, uh, Ms. Cindy Siwe Shikunga. She's joining me now and she was, spe she was uh, actually involved in the oceans economy. And so I'm just going to ask her a couple of questions around that and more broadly. Thank you so much, Minister, for joining me. Um, how have you felt about the interactions here at the BRICS uh, summit or at least the, the BRICS uh, Business Council uh, discussions? And of course, you were here looking specifically at the oceans economy. How's that been going today? No, thank you very much. We, we're very happy that we are here. We made a very important proposal, which we believe will be taken to the heads of state. One of that is that we don't have a, a work stream for transport ministers uh, in the BRICS forum. And we think that that's a serious omission. It has to be established because there's no trade without transport. There is no import, no export that happens in the absence of transport. We therefore are the catalyst, we are the enabler for anything that is being discussed here. And I think that will be taken seriously and I think it will probably be the, the decision of this, of this summit. So we're very happy about that. But as you also have indicated, we are a maritime state as South Africa with our coastline, with our important ports that we have. But of course, we are in partnership with the BRICS states, but also with the continent as such. And we believe that if indeed we must get benefit out of our oceans, then we've have, we have we've started by saying, how do we transport our, our, our goods? Because remember that most of the imports happen in the, in the oceans. If today you can just shut off the oceans, then there will be no, no, no trade at all between countries. Now the issue with us as the continent and South Africa in particular is that we say here is our coal, sit to finish. And, and, and that is a wrong approach because what it means is that the owner of the vessel will decide on which vessel to transport our coal. It will decide on the cost of transporting that coal. It will decide on the insurance that it must charge for the coal. And therefore we remain with the bits and pieces of that, of everything that is like that. We feel as the department, and of course I want to believe as, as, as the BRICS continent, I mean, I mean countries that we need to say this is the vessel. 
That is why we want to have vessels that are flying South Africa's flag, because we'll then be able to say these are the vessels that are going to transport our coal, and this is the amount that we are prepared to pay for transportation, and this is the amount that we are prepared to, and they will come and invest back to South Africa. That's grow the economy of South Africa and contribute to the GDP of South Africa. That's one matter that we're looking at to see how do we do that. But also the very fact that most of our ports are, are aging. The infrastructure there is aging. Whether you, you speak the rail in, the, in our ports or the ports itself, whether you, you, you speak cranes and so on, they're all aging. And the fact of the matter is that we do need some finances in order to ensure that we modernize them, we digitize them, but that we make them more efficient. In terms of even people that are resources, human resources that must work there, mm. it has to be people that understand as to what is happening now. Because those that make and build a ships, they now are aware of the fact that there's digitization. Now, if the port itself cannot respond to that, then we have inefficient ports because the vessels are digitized, the ports are not digitized. And we think those are the matters that we are looking at. How do we fund that? But how do we bring harmony between the countries of Africa, between the countries of SADC? The issue of rail, uh, the issue of gauge and all that, to say who's used the narrow gauge, the standard gauge and everything else. But how best do we have the rail services that move from country to country without hindrances. And I think these are the matters that we're looking at. Minister, you've said a lot of things and I would want to interrogate quite a number of points. But because of time, let's talk about the whole issue of rail. Uh, we do have a major issue in South Africa with our rail issue. But at a broader continental level, what work is being done to ensure that there's a streamline of rail network, you know, from Cape to Cairo, as they say, uh, to ensure that we really are able to materialize and, and make happen this Africa free, free continental trade area? What work is being done, not necessarily at BRICS level, because at the end of the day, it's not really the BRICS business, but at, the, at an African level, at an AU level, what work is being done? Because we can say, oh, you know, BRICS countries help us to invest in the Africa continental free trade area. But if our infrastructure is not up to scratch, you know, what do you do? We, we, we actually have the North-South Corridor, which at some stage South Africa was chairing. It is actually about having that rail corridor from Cape to Cairo. And it does require some funding. It does require some support. That is what we actually are looking at. So sometimes it works, sometimes it gets flat and so on. Then it, it starts again. We believe, I believe, that it could actually as well be my own focus area so that where possible we say who can fund this. Are, are, are countries of, of BRICS willing to come and assist us in order to have this? Because indeed it's going to make this, this, this AFCTA real. That is for us to, 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 to use it and to impact on it. So we do need that. But coming to South Africa itself, the rail sector is a challenge. You know, if you look at the, the, the tracks on the N2, for instance, to Richards Bay, it talks to the rail that is not up to scratch. And in South Africa, we have got our national rail policy. It's very clear, separate vertically infrastructure from operations so that you have got an entity that is responsible for infrastructure like we have in the aviation sector, like we have in the road in, uh, 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 sector. We have Sunral in the road set. Sunral is not the operator. Every one of us can drive on the roads of Sunral, whether you're private or government. It's the same thing with AXA in the aviation space. AXA, it owns the infrastructure, then the airlines, they operate. So it's not, it's not an, 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 a landlord as well as the operator as well. So when SAA does well, it's fine. If it doesn't do well, it's fine. But there are other operators. It will, we believe, as in the, in the rail sector and the national rail policy, we're calling for that to have an infrastructure-related entity. And then operators, they then come, they get slot, they make use of them. We, they pay tariffs as they do in the aviation sector. We say your slot is at this time, you take your slot. If you don't take your slot, you still pay for it. So that we again encourage uh, efficiency on the side of the, operate, of, of the operators themselves. As far as I'm concerned, this is a model 
that is working in South Africa in the aviation and the road sector. And I think it can actually work even in the rail sector. For me, that's what, if we just implement the policy as is, the national rail policy as is, then of course many of the problems will be solved. Minister, one last question because I am conscious of time. Of course, a massive theme is that of climate change and mitigating, adapting to it and so on and so forth. South Africa and other countries have committed to curbing their emissions. What is the general transport policy around that? What is South Africa doing to ensure that all players abide by that? I, I think the, the just transition, as far as we are concerned, has to be just. Uh, it should benefit all of us benefit countries that are far from their trading partners as South Africa and those that are closer to their to their to their trading partners and and as we take these decisions it's important that we say if we agree on this which countries are going to benefit on those that will be impacted upon badly the market-based measures for instance they need us to look at them closely because they can be very negative in countries such as South Africa because I just want to put it in my easy language if you are to pay in order for you to pay for accreditation in or credits I mean in order for you to to sail in South Africa somebody will have to pay for that credit and 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 if the if if if, if we agree that shipping companies will have to buy credits for the, as they emit, and then they are going to buy that. For any vessel that is sailing to us to South Africa, because of the distance, it's going to emit more. And therefore, it will be expensive for it to buy the credits. So we, they will therefore look for other routes that will not make them to pay more because of credits. Also, if you look at us, we've got these waters, you know, the Cape of Storms. They make the vessels to pay, I mean, to emit more. Now, if they are to pay for the amount of carbon emissions, it means, again, that will add on to the disadvantage of South Africa. We don't make our waters to be, storm, to be stormy. We're also not responsible for our location. So if they've got to be buying credits, we will be disadvantaged. And that is why, as South Africa, we stand very firm to say countries such as us, South Africa, Argentina and others, they've got to get their own sort of, whether it's agenda or dispensation, yes, their own dispensation, taking into account our location that we cannot change. But otherwise, if, if we just go on like this and, and be treated as if we're all the same, it will be to the disadvantage of countries such as South Africa. Nobody will want to pay more for sailing. Nobody. So they will choose those, 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 those ports that are closer to them because they will pay less as they, as they emit, if there will still be emission. So I think this is the matter that we're monitoring very closely at IMO. We're very concerned about it. And that is why wherever we go, that is why I ask the question even here to say, what are the views of the, of the private sector in as far as the market-based uh, 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 measures are concerned? Because sometimes when we raise them as politicians, people think that we're political. But this may have extremely negative impact on countries such as South Africa because of our location. You will not want to pay more. So you'll choose that which will make you pay less. And this, I mean, credit thing and buying and paying and so on. For us, yes, definitely want to go to zero fuel. Uh, um, zero of carbon fuel, we agree with that, but we're not the same. We can't be treated just like we are the same. Minister, more to talk about, but not enough time. Thank you so much for having spoken to us at the SABC. Uh, that was the Minister of Transport, Cindy Siwe Chikunga, just giving us her views on the BRICS meetings that have been taking place thus far and talking about some of the issues, some of the um, issues that come out of the international maritime organizations and some of the rules that they're imposing worldwide, talking about how they will adversely affect uh, up, uh, very, countries that are at the very south uh, of uh, the uh, world uh, are saying that there needs to be a different type of dispensation so that it's not so costly for um, ship owners to come to South Africa. Otherwise, ultimately, it will mean dearer goods for South Africans when they buy them at the retail stores.